Let's talk decision trees. Decision trees are often algorithms we use to visualize non-linear relationships in our data. But how do they work and how can we simply implement them in code? All in today's video. Let's get right into it. First, what does a decision tree actually look like? So here's an example of the tree that we are going to be generating today with a code we will write in just a few minutes. The first thing we need to know about decision trees is that you'll notice the way they organize our data. They organize our data by asking true or false questions about certain columns, as seen in the diagram. So today we're going to be using the iris data set. So the iris data set is a flower data set with four columns that help us classify whether, what type of iris species the flower we're looking at is. This organizational chart, this decision tree, helps us understand how our decision tree model is making decisions based on the different values of the four different columns. So for example, if you look at the top node, the top node says that petal width centimeters is less than or equal to 0.8. If that condition is true, then we know that our flower is a iris setosa. If that condition is false, we need to ask more questions to sort our data. You'll notice there's this line that says genie equals some value, a probability distribution between zero and one. So we need to ask the question, how do decision trees even ask these specific questions? We know to ask a question when it's uncertain whether we have data that all fit in one category. So when we have data that some of, some of the samples are Aristotosa, some are Virginica, some are Versicolor, we need to ask a question to purify our node, to make sure that the node only has one type of flower in it. All right, so we measure this uncertainty or this purity with something called Gini impurity. Gini impurity is simply the probability that you would be incorrect in randomly matching a label and a row. Label being Iris Setosa Versicolor or Virginica and a row being one of our samples, all right? So that is gonna tell us how pure, impure, our collection of data is. If Gini impurity is zero, that's exactly what we want. We have one type of species in our node. If it's above zero, we need to ask another question, all right? How do we know what question to ask in our decision tree? This is where information gain comes in. That is the way we measure the value of our question. To measure the value of our question, information gain, we take the weighted average of Gini impurity of the left and right child nodes, so the left and right subsequent nodes from our parent node, and subtract them from the original parent node impurity. All right, and the whole goal is to find information gain that is super, super high because with an inv information gain that is really high, that will yield child nodes with Gini impurities that are very low. Now that we understand all the uh, kind of conceptual uh, aspects of decision trees, let's put it all together and then get right into the code. So the way we build a decision tree is we recursively go through our data and we say, all right, what is the Gini impurity? Okay, the Gini impurity is X. If it is not zero, we need to ask a question. Let's ask a true or false question with the most information gain. We ask our question, we sort the data that fits into the true into a true bin, the data that fits into a false into a false bin. And then again, in the true bin, is the Gini impurity zero? If it is zero, in our case, as we see in our model, we do nothing and we move on to the false. And we ask another question. What is the Gini impurity? What is the highest information gain question? And so on and so on and so on. And that's how we build a decision tree that looks like this. So now our job is to actually implement this in code with scikit-learn. Let's get right into it. All right, 
let's take some time now to just go through the code that is involved in generating our decision tree model. All right, so this first block of code is the simple stuff that we do at the beginning of every video, importing pandas and importing our data set through pd.readcsv. We call on head just to see you know, what the data set looks like and we can see our four uh, columns, our four feature columns, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and then our label, our species column. So this is the very basic and uh, beginning parts of our code. And then we have a bunch of sklearn libraries that are going to be used to either visualize, classify uh, our data. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to identify what are the columns that are going to help us predict what our species is. And we need to put that into an array. So we need to actually take all of our feature uh, columns and put them into an array. So this line of code is just generating a list and then iterating through the columns, appending each column to that list and just deleting the last one because species is our output and we just need our four input columns. And you'll see how we use this a little bit later. So now we need to define our X and Y inputs to our decision tree. So our X is iris column list. Column list are the four uh, kind of feature inputs, those four feature columns. And why our output is our species. That's what we're trying to classify for. So we just want to print those out and make sure that those will be able to, uh, you know, be plug and played in uh, to our code in just a minute. So we're going to be using X and Y to input into our decision tree classifier. And that's what it's going to optimize around. All right. So now we actually need to uh, decide what the train test split split is. So in machine learning, you need to split your data into training data and testing data. So that's what this line of code is doing. It's creating four different variables, x train, x test, y train, y test, and assigning it to a method called train test split in scikit-learn, which takes x and y. x are features, y are label. Uh, and the test size or the test tra train split is 70-30, so therefore test size is 70 30 what that means or 0.3 that means that 70% of the data is going to be used for training and 30% of the data is going to be used for testing all right and then random state is kind of like just a seed uh, that we can call back on but the important thing is that train test split the 70% training 30% testing this is an this is an accepted split uh, for machine learning uh, data sets and classification problems so now we're actually going to get into the part where we use scikit-learn to generate our decision tree. So scikit-learn is really easy. We just have to call in a variable CL CLF equals decision tree classifier. And then we just need to fit our data, which means we're training our data on X train and Y train. So that's 70% of our data allocated to our training process. And then we create a variable called Y predictions and assign that to clf.predict x test. So we're predicting based on our x test test columns what our y will be with the dot predict method. And now all that is left is actually visualizing what our decision tree looks like and we do that with the following code. All right, so dot data creates a, a file that we can assign all of uh, like our decision tree um, image to. I want to scroll down so you guys can see the entire code. All right, export graph viz. Graph viz is a library we imported at the very beginning. As you can see right here, graph viz. And so we're going to use graph viz. Um, its method, we put in CLF, which is our decision tree. All right, and then our out file is the file that we're exporting to, and we assign that to dot data. And then we have a bunch of different arguments that are just for formatting special characters, rounded, that's just like uh, deciding what the shape of the boxes are gonna look like, the font. But the really important thing here is when you're gonna be using this file for your own data, if you wanna put your own data into this file, 
make sure you look at column list class names. So column list is the list of uh, different columns that are the features of our data and then class names are the actual names of the species that are used for classification. All right, and the final thing is we use pi.plus, which is another library that we imported before uh, to actually graph our decision tree, export that to a PNG, assign that PNG file to iris.png, and this is our result as we showed at the beginning of the video. It's a beautiful chart, very colorful, very insightful for a beginner to look at. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions on how I generated this or any questions about the code, make sure to leave them down below. I love answering your questions. I love the positive feedback we've been getting lately. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.